Lando Johnson, now the all-time leading scorer in UC Santa Barbara history, and what a story of perseverance and overcoming a lot of obstacles. In case you don't story, it's a it's a great story for Orlando. It's a sad story. His mother, Vicky Renee Johnson, was murdered when Orlando was age one. He lived with his grandmother for 10 years, then she passed away. There was another tragedy with family members uh, in a house that, that burned and some other relatives died. And then you see his brothers right there, Jamel and Robbie. They took in Orlando. He lived with one of them during his junior high years. He lived with the other one during his high school years. They're the ones who made sure sure that he stayed focused and basically raised him, Mark. I, la I asked Orlando today what he learned from Jamel and Robbie. And he said, what it takes to be a man. He's got the picture of his mother's grave on his phone that reminds him of his heritage every day. Last Sunday was his mother's birthday. Both brothers went to their mother's grave to honor her. Orlando Johnson, Jamel, and Robbie Johnson, congratulations on raising one fine young man. Jamel played football at St. Mary's, and he was sort of like the uh, the life coach. Taught him how to, as we look at the record breaker, taught him how to dress, taught him how to speak, taught him how to be a man. And then Robbie was a basketball player himself, and he used to go one-on-one -on -one against Orlando in the backyard, and he wouldn't let Orlando win. He said, no, you got to get better, and I'm going to help you get better. I asked him if he had two minutes to live, and he could only make one phone call, who would he call? Tough question. He said, coach, it'd have to be a three-way call. Jamel and Robbie, I wouldn't let him down. At one point, the brothers felt like, well, Orlando needs to go to a private high school. So they worked overtime to make extra money so they could afford to send Orlando to a private high school so that he could get better prepared academically for college. Had to work overtime. They had their own families. They had their own kids. But they sacrificed to make their younger brother better. You know, both brothers successful in their own right. Jamel, manager for the Pepsi bottling company, and Robbie works at the Naval Postgrad School, but very successful individuals in their own right. So the Gauchos, a three-point lead, five minutes into this Big West Conference game. Great to have you with us live from Santa Barbara inside the Thunderdome. This is their leading scorer, Hanson. Nice move inside. He can score inside or outside. And the scouting report on Santa Barbara's defense People feel that they can get into gaps and then they can make plays. Oftentimes, Santa Barbara is good for a few passes and then they tend to play with their hands down at their sides, which creates passing angles and penetration gaps. Great pass by Nunnally to find Serna and he finishes inside. There is an open gap in that Cal Poly zone there. Been impressed with the way that Johnson and Nunnally have passed the basketball in the early stages of this game. You know, they're both very unselfish, and that's been the success and the hallmark of a Bob Williams coach basketball team. Now, Pauly was one of five to begin the game from the field, but they've made four of their last five. Furman over the seven foot three, Simoji the high archer. And that just shouldn't happen. When you get into a gap, get into the paint like that, there should be hands everywhere. And if there's one constructive critical comment I'd have about Santa Barbara's defense, if they can improve in that area, I think they become a lot more stingy defensively. This is Nate Garth with the basketball. He's in a point guard now. Point guard has been a work in progress for the Gauchos this year. Garth with the penetration, can't finish with the left hand, and it's rebounded by Donahue. See the active hands? Yeah. Cal Poly went up and challenged the shot right there. It really makes a difference when you play fingertip to fingertip, wingspan defense. Watch the next time the ball gets in the gap. See if the defense reacts and see hand placement. There it is. And Hanson going right at the seven foot three. Sano Samoji, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be Gaucho basketball. Smoji number 55 in gray can really change the game. We talk about wingspan. And he's seven foot three. Probably about a seven foot one, seven foot two inch wingspan. Just by playing with his hands up consistently and a little bit of anticipation, he can change the game. And some NBA team's gonna take a flyer on him because of his ability to run and catch it. Let me ask you this. At seven foot three, he doesn't face anyone close to his size in this conference. Would his skill set look better at the next level? No question, because I've coached a 7'3 kid and a 7'2 kid. When they're matched up against the other big kids, they look a lot better. And draining the three for the Gauchos is Kyle Boswell. He's now made 14 of his last 23 three-point attempts. That's why he's in the game. And a plus 40% from three. He gives a lot of energy off the bench, can really shoot it. This is Malik Love who checked in, that one rims out. 
And the big Samoji comes down with the rebound. Samoji challenged that shot. Well done by the big star. Catch and shoot Orlando from well beyond the arc. Perhaps trying to show his NBA range. And he gets fouled as he's on his way up. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. You know, speaking of the NBA, Mark, for Orlando Johnson, he initially declared for the NBA draft after his junior season. And when we talked to him earlier today, he said he was really on the fence about it. He wasn't sure which way to go, but factoring the lockout, and he was not guaranteed to be drafted. He might have been a second-round pick. And most importantly, to go back to his brothers, they said, we want you to get your degree. And he said it was the best decision he made to return for his senior year. Well, it turned into a very long offseason for Orlando Johnson between the NBA camp and then USA Basketball. And so it, it has been physically demanding for him. And at times they felt like he may be a little bit tired, but he's getting his second win now. And he will get his degree in sociology. He'd like to teach and coach someday. He'd make a great one. Yeah, I love how he said that he's given teachers enough grief over the years that he feels like he's got to come into him that he should be able to teach kids one day. Eversley is fouled by the big Samoji, and so he'll shoot two. And the foul's actually going to go against Christian Peterson, a former walk-on, has earned a scholarship. Eversley uh, spent his freshman year at Rice. Sat out last season. He's now a sophomore for Cal Poly, redshirt sophomore. And he's really come on lately. He scored just 52 points in his last 15 games. But he's had double digits scoring 10 of his last 13 games. Now, he was not a starter early in the season, but he's been very, very consistent. Cal Poly now matching up out of the zone. This is Peterson. Johnson inside. Good idea for the give and go. And there's going to be another foul called against Cal Poly. And so for the Gauchos, a five-point lead as we go to break. And when we come back, UC Santa Barbara, their tournament tested. What's the story about them? Why were they jumping up and down? We'll tell you when we come back from this break. <laughs> 